Hello, hello, and welcome to the Moana Adams podcast, where we talk all things travel, wellness, and teenage girl. I'm your host, Moana, a full-time travel teen. I have a great episode for you this week, so let's get into it. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Moana Adams podcast. I am so excited that you're tuning into this episode because we are talking about romanticizing fall and my fall bucket list. But before we can get, get into that, Let's go over the show structure and let me introduce you into our segments. So I always want to start off with where I'm recording from. So it kind of gives you an idea of what part of the trip we're in, how many states I've been to so far, because if you don't know already, I am a full-time travel teen. I live in 300 square feet in a Class A RV and I am traveling the country with my family. We are doing 48 states in 48 weeks. We are right now in New York, our 35th state. And then after that, I want to move into what I'm grateful for. Practicing gratitude is so incredibly important to me. I think it's really beneficial and it's something that everyone should absolutely do because everyone has something to be grateful for no matter your situation. So we'll go into what I'm grateful for which today is that it's not raining. It has been raining nonstop for the past two days here in New York. The first night we got here, it thunderstormed and hailed so heavily, so loudly. It woke me up. I could not sleep and it was absolutely awful. So I'm glad that it is not super sunny right now, but it's not pouring rain. After I'm done with my gratitude, I want to move into what I'm currently in love with or what I'm currently loving. I, it's a really big part of my personality that I'll fall in love with random little things. So I want to share that and I'm really excited to incorporate that into the episodes. So this week, what I'm currently in love with is that it is finally starting to cool down and it's not a hundred degrees. Most of our summer in the Midwest, it was Uh, It was 100 degrees every single day, all day, extremely hot, and now it's finally cooling down, and I can wear hoodies again without melting, so I'm so excited about that. After that, then we can move into the bulk of the episode, why you're here, why you're listening, and today that is romanticizing fall and my fall bucket list. We are going to be spending this fall in the northeastern United States, and I could not be more excited. I have always wanted to travel up to the northeast, and now I'm getting the chance to spend it and in the fall time, which I think is the best time to go. The leaves are changing, it's cooling down, and I'm, I can't wait. So I have made a bucket list of things I want to check off while we're up north. I think that fall is like, to me, fall is the end of the year. I know winter starts right in, I think it's late November or early to mid-December when winter starts. I don't know when, let's look up the first day of winter is. Let's see. So the first day of winter is in very late December. So fall kind of finishes off the year for us and I am a big believer in finishing strong and it's never too late to start so start romanticizing your life start embracing what you have and enjoy the rest of your year make the most of it no matter how your spring or your winter or your summer went you can still make your fall better so here are some things that I'm going to be doing to romanticize my fall. The first thing is I want to have a scary movie night. I am a big fan of true crime and horror. I'm actually right now waiting for the show on YouTube from Watcher Ghost Files to come out. It comes out later today and I could not be more excited, but I have only seen a few true horror movies and I have never really been 
scared of them, so I want to see what it feels like to be genuinely terrified of a movie. So I want to get snacks, snuggle up on the couch, and watch a few actual real horror movies that are going to make me genuinely scared. If you have any recommendations, please let me know because I have no idea where to begin. I've seen a couple of The Conjuring movies and a few other assorted random thrillers to horror movies, but they've never really scared me that badly, so I want to be genuinely scared and have that feeling of just absolute terror and it might give me anxiety, but I think it'll be worth it. The second thing on my list is to thrift the perfect sweater. When we moved into the RV, I got rid of all of my knits and all of my sweaters. I don't know why, I guess I just didn't love them and like knowing that we would be in the RV and that every single piece in my wardrobe mattered, I wanted it to be either I love it or I leave it. So I left all of them. And now we're back in fall and the cool weather and I have no sweaters. I actually fell in love with this one sweater from, I think it was H&M. It's this bright, bold red because I've absolutely fallen in love with the color red recently. And I put it on my wish list and left it there for a few months to see if I would still want it because I'm not a big fan. Even though it's what I tend to do, I don't love buying from fast fashion brands. I try to be conscious of the pieces I add into my wardrobe, and so I add it to a wish list for a couple of months to see if I still want it. Well, finally, just a couple weeks ago, I was like, all right, I haven't wanted this sweater long enough. I still really want it. I think I'm ready to order it. So I went on to H&M, and it is completely sold out and out of stock. And when it comes to brands like H&M or Zara, they don't usually bring those pieces back very often. So the likelihood of them bringing that one sweater is back is very, very slim. So I went on to Poshmark and I found the same exact sweater in my size and it was like 80% cheaper than what it would have been if I had bought it from the actual H&M website. And I got super excited. I had my mom ship it to her house so that she could bring it up when she comes to visit. And we haven't heard back from the seller. It's been a couple weeks now. So we're still waiting on it to be shipped. Hopefully it turns out good. This is my first time ordering from a second-hand website like Poshmark. So I'm kind of nervous. I'm not quite sure how it's going to turn out. Crossing my fingers that the seller checks their notifications, sees that we've ordered it, and ships it. But we'll see. The third thing on the list is to make fall treats. I absolutely love cooking and baking. I have loved it for as long as I can remember. And one of my favorite desserts is pumpkin bread. And I have this pumpkin bread recipe. It's only three ingredients and it's so delicious. It's so simple, easy to make. It's just a box of spice cake mix, pumpkin puree, and chocolate chips. I'm pretty sure that's it. I'd have to double check, but I'm 98% sure those are the only ingredients. You just mix everything up, put it in a pan, and throw it in the oven. It is so good, so gooey, absolutely delicious. And then I also would love to find a way to make a healthier version of caramel apples. I love caramel, caramel, however you say it. Maybe use dates and make a caramel base and then get toppings like cacao nibs and Lily's chocolate chips. I love those. They're really great. Add a bunch of toppings and make like a little bar of them. I think that would be absolutely delicious. Next up on the list is to do a fall craft with my little sister, Everest. She's four years old and <laughs> she is a little crazy, but I absolutely love her, and when I was her age, I loved doing crafts. Every birthday, every Christmas, I would ask for different craft supplies, and I have since stopped doing them. I don't do them nearly as much, but I would really like to get back into my younger years and find some fall crafts to do with her, really engage her, and spend some quality time with her. 
quality time is my love language and it's really important to me to get not just quality time with other people but also myself and introduce her to something new something different that she'll really love and have a lot of fun with because when you're four years old everything is new and everything is different this next one is to have a killer Halloween costume. My last two Halloween costumes were not my best work. Halloween is my absolute favorite holiday, and every year I want to have this really good Halloween costume, and it never quite goes my way. I think the past three years, it's been messed up, maybe four. One year, we did the my brother and I did the inflatable costumes, and I did a Grim Reaper, Grim Reaper one, and... The night of Halloween, I had worn it to a couple parties already, but the night of Halloween, the inflation device in mine broke completely, and so I couldn't use it anymore, and so I had no costume. And then, the next year, I'm not quite sure what I was, but I don't remember it being particularly great. And then, just last year, we, my best friend and I, tried to do our own costumes and wanted to do something really really different and they were good they were cute but they just didn't quite hit that mark so this year I want to really redeem myself have a really good costume and I think what we're doing this year is a family costume we do them every couple of years and we're doing men in black it's actually my idea I'm pretty proud of it but we're going to dress up my siblings and I as aliens and then my parents are going to dress up in all black outfits and we're going to go around as a little family. We'll be in, I'm not quite sure actually where we'll be for Halloween. I know we'll be in Salem, Massachusetts just two weeks before but I am excited to do a really great family Halloween costume this year. Next up on the list is to go apple picking. Apple picking has been on my list for four or five years now. I've wanted to do it for a really long time. And last summer we went with my mom to pick peaches and blackberries. And that was a lot of fun. However, the peaches had something on them. I'm not sure what exactly it was. But it made my skin very, very itchy and kind of burned when you would pick them off the tree. I think it has to do with a defense mechanism the fruit has to keep predators away from the fruit because I know mangoes do a similar thing where when you break them off the vine they release a liquid kind of like poison ivy or poison oak does and it's that same kind of compound and it keeps predators off of them. So I think it's a similar idea but I don't think apples have a, mecha a defense mechanism like that so I would love to go apple picking. We eat a lot of apples in our house. So I want to go and when you do you pick farms you get a ridiculous amount of fruit. So I'm going to find plenty of apple recipes. Hopefully do the car caramel caramel apples with them. And I think it would be a lot of fun. Next up on the list is to visit a haunted location. Like I said before, I'm a big true crime and ghost hunting fan. I have been watching the show BuzzFeed Unsolved. If you know, you know. But I've been watching the show for a couple of years now. I absolutely love it. And I've actually already been to two of their locations. The Sorrel Wheat House in Savannah, Georgia. And most recently, the Pythian Castle in Missouri. And it was a ton of fun. The Pythian Castle, we did not get to go to the actual ghost tour because we had my younger siblings and they weren't quite old enough. But this fall, we are going to be near the Eastern State Penitentiary. This one has been on my list for a while now, and I am so ex I could not be more excited to go. I'm hoping that we get to do a genuine, real ghost style tour of this location. I'm hoping that it lives up to my expectations. The past couple of locations we've been to, I've never really felt like it was haunted. But this one, I don't know, I just feel differently about and I'm hoping that maybe I'll have a paranormal experience that will confirm whether I believe or don't believe in ghosts because I'm not sure yet. 
but I'm really excited to see what I find. And the last thing on the list is probably one of my favorites. It is to take spooky season creative self-portraits. I also really love photography and creative photography. I started following on YouTube a few years ago. I think her name's Kika, and she used to do creative photography content, and now she does knitting, I think, so I don't watch her as much. But she really introduced me to creative photography, and... I'm really excited for this season. I'm hoping to do some really spooky, either witch-themed or dark fairy-themed something on the darker side and do some really great portraits. I have a couple of ideas in mind. I'm trying to still figure out how I want to express them and tell a story with them. But I have a couple of ideas. I'm excited, and I hope that you will see them soon. That is all the things on the list. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to give this podcast a rate and review, as well as follow me on all my socials linked in the show notes. Don't forget to drink some water, and I'll talk to you later.